Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about something extremely important. It is so important and so useful and so advanced that I was even thinking of putting in putting that in my paid course, which probably does not exist, which is why I'm doing this video right now. But it's extremely important and it's just uh, extremely advanced functionality. And what I'm talking about are Figma tokens. So what are Figma tokens to begin with? Well, tokens like the styles on the right are just basically styles that you can use uh, throughout a design file, throughout multiple files, so on and so forth. And it's a global place where you can go and change these styles to update them. But one really interesting thing about Figma tokens is it allows you to do a lot of advanced things, which Figma by default does not allow you to do, which is why we're going to be using a, the Figma tokens plugin to go ahead and do that. Now, how does that plugin work? Well, first of all, you have to open the plugin, which is which is named Figma tokens. So once you have that in, you can see that there are different types of sets that you can create. So you have a global set, then you can obviously create multiple sets, which you can switch to. But by default, if you're running just a single library, you're probably just going to need a single global set, which you're going to use. Um, as you can see, this is our design system file that we that we've been going through in our course. Um, and we have a bunch of textiles, a bunch of like color styles, some shadows, probably just one shadow, which is not really much, but you have certain things. But apart from that, the Figma tokens plugin actually allows you to add other tokens as well, like the size token, the spacing, the color, the border radius, the border width, the opacity, like a lot of things which currently can't be set here, right? A lot of these things can't really be set here. Sure, colors can, sure, maybe, um, I don't know, typography can and stuff along those lines, but not all of these things. Now, in order for me to just go ahead and start the, using the Figma tokens by default, the ones that I've created, I need to import them. So I can do that by going to the styles uh, option or drop down, and I can click on import styles. Once I do import them, it's gonna basically tell me, hey, we're importing all of these styles. Do you wanna import them? I'm gonna say, okay. So as you can see, we have the color styles, we have the box shadow, we have the typography that we basically included the font sizes, different types of font sizes that we have here. And yeah, we have all of that. Now imagine if I go to a button right now, I'm gonna to go to this button. As you can see, it's using the P300 style. I can also go ahead and just change the P300 here. I'm just gonna copy this color because I may have to revert it. But just to showcase it to you, if I want to say like, I want this color to be there instead of that one, I'm just gonna click on update. And as you can see, all of the P300 styles in the whole file have been updated without me necessarily changing the styles here. But some of you might think, well, then so what? Like you could, have, you could have just done that by updating the styles on the right. And you're true, you're right about that, but it's much easier to go here and manage things. But the power of Figma tokens doesn't necessarily exist in the color styles, right? Because that's already provided by Figma. Now, imagine I have a border radius here of four pixels. I'm gonna go to the border radius here. I'm just gonna search border and we are gonna find the border radius here. So here's the border radius. I'm gonna create a name for this border radius. I'm gonna say that the border radius I wanna have, maybe I wanna have three different types of border radiuses throughout the design system. And what we wanna do is use a border radius named SM, which is gonna basically contain a four pixel border. I'm gonna create it. Once I have created that, I'm just gonna go ahead and like revert this search. I'm gonna minimize the color. And as you can see here, we have the border radius. I can basically just go here in these three base components of the button. And, I, and I'm i already using the border radius four, so I'm just gonna click here. If I was using, let's say, no border radiuses, as you can see, every single button has been reverted. I can just go click here and say SM, and that's gonna update the base variant and obviously all of the other variants that are attached to it. It's still, you, you, you would probably say, hey, it's still manual. Even if I go here or do update something, it's not gonna update uh, globally. And you're right, like if we just go here and do an exercise here, I'm just gonna go to my base text field as well and I'm gonna give this the SM as well. So now this is the SM here as well in the tabs. Let's see if we're using SM somewhere, we're using it here. So this is also four, so we're just gonna name, make it four and there we have it. So now let's just go ahead and say that I wanna update this SM and maybe we can even just create like, let's say some other one as well. Maybe MD is gonna be eight pixels border radius. Now imagine I say, hey, I really don't like the four pixel and maybe I just wanna update this four pixel to eight or maybe I wanna change this to zero. Maybe I don't want border radiuses in this type of application. I'm just gonna click on update 
And as you can see, this tab border radius is gone. Similarly, if we go to the buttons, border radius is now, if we obviously this was just applying to the page, so I did not apply it to the whole document. So I'm gonna click on update. It's gonna say, sure, do you wanna run it? I'm gonna run it. And now it's obviously running through the whole file. It's figuring out where that particular token is being used for three, two, one, and then zero. And now it's updating it. And as you can see, the button is now updated. Uh, the tabs should be updated as well, which they previously were. Even the text fields, which we did not check, have now been updated because they were inheriting this border radius. If I now go back and say, hey, maybe the four was actually okay. So let's just keep it at four. I'm gonna click on update. Obviously, I'm gonna say update the whole file. It's gonna update it because now it's already done all of that pre-processing. It's not gonna take that much time. As you can see, the text fields are updated. Surprisingly, the tabs are updated. The buttons are updated. No matter where you're using this particular token, the border radius token, it's automatically going to be updated without you going ahead and manually updating the border radius on each different pages, on each different components. And that's just magic, right? Figma currently does not allow you to do something like that. That is just insane. And then obviously you can publish the changes if you want, if you want this to be used in other files and you can do that, that's perfectly fine. And you can do the same thing with other properties as well. So for example, if I had to do the same thing with let's say some of the other properties that are available, maybe with opacities you can do it, with border radiuses, uh, or border radius I've already shown, with spacing and stuff, like let's just go ahead and actually do it with uh, the border width property. I'm gonna go here, I'm basically just gonna select all of these which have a one pixel border, let's see which ones have the one pixel, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this. So I'm just gonna select all of the ones that have a one pixel border. Um, these ones have a one pixel border. Let's just go and search for a border width. So here's the border width property. I'm just gonna press enter. So the base component is selected since that's the one that actually has the border. I'm gonna say that the border uh, border minus SM, I'm just gonna give this token border minus SM. I'm gonna say the value of it is one. I'm just gonna click here and say border minus SM1. So this should now be applied to all of the buttons that I've selected. Now imagine, I can obviously select outside. I can go here and I can say edit. I'm gonna say the border SM, maybe it should be two by default. I'm gonna change that to two. I'm gonna click on update. It's gonna say, hey, do you, are you sure you wanna get up? Be, update all of these things. It's already updated, right? I didn't, I, I, I'm not even sure if I had to press the update button. If I go here, sorry, this is the border radius. If I go to the border width, I can say the border width for all of the ones using the border minus SM token should be eight. I'm gonna click on update. And as you can see, all of these are updated and you could have done the same thing with different files here as well. I'm just gonna go to a different file. As you can see, these are using a one pixel border. So I'm just gonna go here, I'm gonna say, that all of these should also, since as you can see, this is one, should also use border minus SM. I changed that to border minus SM. So now it's linked to this token. I can just go here, I can say edit, and I'm gonna say the border minus SM was correct by default. It, it was one and it should be one. So I'm gonna click on update. I'm gonna click this update to the whole file, just to be sure. I'm, I updated this to one, this is now one. If I go back to my buttons, that's also one. Similarly, for the more focused state, or the active state which has a two pixel border, I'm gonna create a border minus, I can also create like a border minus MD or a border minus two, it completely depends upon me. I'm gonna say two, I'm gonna press enter. So obviously this two is selected. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna select all of the ones that have the two pixel border. I'm gonna click on the border two, now it's linked. Similarly, I'm gonna go to my text fields, see if there are two pixel borders here, which they aren't. So I'm just gonna leave it at it, or maybe the focus, state should actually be two pixel. So I'm just gonna go here, press, select all of the ones that should be two pixel. Um, I think these ones, I'm gonna press enter and I'm gonna say this should be border two. Now, as you can see, this is border two and the buttons are border two. Imagine down the road, I say the focus state or these two border minus two should actually be three. The border size should be three. I'm gonna click on update. As you can see, this is three. I'm gonna go to my text fields. This is now also three. I mean, you basically have a granular control over properties that previously weren't being controlled by Figma and you can just go ahead and easily update them and you can publish the changes and you can do all of that magic and that's just amazing. Similarly, for example, as you can see, the spacing here is four. You can even adjust the spacings, my friend. You can even adjust those spacings with Figma tokens. I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna search space 
So the space should be here. So I'm going to say by uh, spacing minus SM should be four. I'm going to say I'm going to give another spacing spacing minus MD should be maybe six. And I'm going to give another spacing spacing minus LG should be eight. I mean, I'm just creating these on the fly just to showcase them to you. So if we now go to the space, this is the space property. So this is uh, four by default. So I'm just going to change that to four. Let's see what this is. This is six. I'm going to change that to six. And let's see what this is. This is eight here. So I'm going to change this to eight. So now these are linked. I'm going to go to my buttons and do the same thing again. I'm going to go here to the base variant. As you can see, this is 10. This one is eight. So I'm just going to change that to eight. This one is 10. So obviously I need to create a spacing minus uh, XL, which can be 10. And then just change, just give that to this one. And then I'm going to go here. I'm going to say the spacing is 12. So I'm going to say spacing minus two XL is going to be 12. And I'm going to apply that to this one. Obviously we won't be able to test it out quite a lot, but what we can do here is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a button that's using a, a similar spacing so you can see it. So here's the instance. This one is using the eight pixel spacing and I'm going to grab a text field that's also using the eight pixel spacing just to show you. I think uh, this one is using the eight pixel spacing. So I'm just going to copy this one. I'm going to place it right beside the button so you can see all of the changes that are happening. So now, as you can see, I'm going to go to my spacing eight pixel one. I'm going to edit the token and I'm going to say the spacing should be 20 just to showcase it to you. I'm going to click on update. As you can see, the spacing has been updated on all of the buttons that are using that this particular size of spacing. Even the text fields have been updated. As you can see on the larger ones, we were using this larger spacing. So they've all been updated. And now you can easily revert them back as well. I can say that apologies. I didn't really want you to do that. It should just be eight. Just let's just go ahead and revert it back. And now it's being reverted on all of the pages wherever you were using these tokens. Now, this is just one example or like a few examples of the power of Figma tokens. I can't highly recommend these enough. Like you can even update the fonts, man, even if you were to go and update. So I'm just going to go here. I'm going to, I can do it. Oh, never mind. You get the idea. I don't want to go through every single property and show how, show how to, you how to use this. You basically get the idea. You can play around with opacities, with different sizes and a lot of these powerful things and it's just amazing. Now there's just one other property that I would like to highlight and that's the sizing. And the reason why I do so is because I'm following a certain pattern on, pattern on my sizing. As you can see, the small size is 32 in terms of the height of the inputs. This is 40, which is medium, and this is 48, um, which is the size of the inputs. And similarly, if we go here on the buttons, they're following a very similar style, 32, 40, and then 48. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and create sizes, sizing tokens for these, we would go ahead and give like the token names, which is going to be size minus, let's say, just give it small. This is 32. I'm going to create another one, say size minus medium. This is going to be 40 and then size minus large, which is going to be 48. Now that I've done that, if I just go here and try to apply it. Now, this is a huge mistake that a lot of people may make when they're using the plugin for the first time. If they click on it, as you can see, the both the height and the width have been reduced to 32, which is not something that we want. Obviously, the width is going to be dependent on the text or the content. So I'm going to go here instead and I'm going to say I need you to apply this as a height. That's applied. I'm going to go here. I'm going to say that I need you to apply this as a height. That's going to be applied. And then here, I need you to apply the large size as a height. I'm going to do the same thing with the inputs. This is going to be the height. This is going to be the height. And this one will be the height. And when a certain property is applied, it has a blue uh, highlight on this, which so you can see that it's applied. Similarly, if we go here, that's applied. If we go to the buttons, as you can see, we have the spacing and the sizing tokens applied here um, and stuff along those lines. Now, let's say a client comes in. He says, I don't really like the, re the 32 pixel buttons. Let's just make them. Um, let's just make all of our small variants 36 pixels. If, for example, you did not have these tokens, you would again have to go separately to different pages to do so. But now if I just go here, edit the token, and I'm going to say the small size is now going to be 36. As you can see, this is now updated. Similarly, if you go to the text fields, the small size for the text field should also be updated. It's now 36. If I wanted to go ahead and make it extremely small, I can say it should be 24. And this should now be 24. Obviously, some of the other components that are inheriting the base structure would also be 24 and the same would happen for the button as well. But I don't want to do that. I'm just going to revert it to 32. 
So this is the power of Figma tokens and I would highly recommend people who are using Figma on an advanced level to start using these because this is an extremely powerful plugin and it allows you to start using Figma tokens like, like you would start using let's say uh, CSS uh, classes or utility based classes and let's say Tailwind or any other tool like that to actually create a structure like that and it also allows a lot of flexibility. So that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Do subscribe, do hit the bell icon, let me know if there's anything you missed or anything that you don't understand. I know this is a complex video and I'll see you in the next one and I'll see you definitely in the comments. Do share this video as well because I think this is an extremely advanced topic and other advanced and proficient users of Figma would definitely like it. So I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.